And we're here with our guy, Max Crosby. And Max, I was thinking yesterday when we found out you were going to come join us, I was just kind of thinking of the journey a little bit in terms of you had the year in Oakland, right? And then yeah. each of these three, now going into year three in Vegas, like it feels like the start of each of those years was so unique and so different, right? You think back to that final year in Oakland, like we all knew that was going to be the final ride in, in the East Bay. And each year now coming into Vegas has been so unique in its own way. Like as we get ready for week one, the official start of doing this thing for real, like how do you kind of look at 2022 for not only Max Crosby, for the, but for this team too? Yeah, honestly, uh, it's funny you said that because I feel the same way. Like every year is like its own different storyline. It feels like, and uh, it's exciting in a way because you know new like new challenges and things like that. Like I I feel like I need that you know individually, just like getting new challenges to stay you know find a new reason to get motivated and and things of that nature. And I feel like that's just natural. Um, but yeah, you know it's uh, it's it's a it's another opportunity, you know, as a, as a team, as an organization, um, to go out there and, and be at our best. And you know, we obviously we brought in guys like Devonte Chandler. You know, everyone's super excited. You know, you can feel the energy. Like I feel like my family is <laughs> they're like hit me up every day. My cousins, everyone's talking about it. Like we're so you know we cannot wait to the season. Everyone's trying to come to the games, and it's like. You know, as a player, like, you kind of forget about it sometimes. Like, I, and you don't forget about it, but it's like when you're in it, you know, every single day, like, you don't realize, like, when you take a step back and look at it from the outside, like, how much people really love, you know, what we do. So, like, that gives me motivation, like, knowing, you know, my family, a whole fan base, a whole, you know, whole states, you know, Nevada, California, everyone, like, they live and die by Raider football, and it's like, you know, it, it just it fires me up and, you know, it just gives me more motivation to go out there and, and continue to work hard every single day and be be at my best. Is there a fine line for a player? You talk about the excitement and, and your your family's hitting you up. And obviously you, you feel the excitement in this city right now yeah. for week one. And obviously week two is going to be crazy here at Allegiant Stadium. But like, is there a fine line between understanding that excitement, understanding like, yeah, people are fired up. They're ready to do this thing. But like we also have a job to do and we also have to kind of stay in the moment more or less. Yeah. You know, I feel like. Uh, it's you know as a professional like you have to you have to find that balance you know I feel like and it does take time and it's like trial and error in a way um I remember as a rookie like I just showed up and I was you know ready to you know just have fun at practice I wouldn't you know I wasn't doing a ton of extra work and things like that I always went hard but like you know family wise I didn't know how to manage you know from family friends it was just like all I was just trying to make everyone happy and do everything and then my second year like you know, the COVID year, boom, nothing's going on. And then you're like by yourself, you're like, damn, I have no fan, like nobody going to the games. It's like, it was a lot different, but I feel like over time, like you real, you know, you start to realize like your routine is like everything. And like, for me, um, I feel like I do a good, a, you know, a really good job nowadays with like managing it. Cause like my family and my friends, and I, there's so many people that they want to come see me play and they want to come to Vegas and want to stay at the house. I'm, not, I'm just like, they know what it is with me. Like, I'm not, like, <laughs> I feel like people look at me from the outside and, like, you know, think I got, like, the you know, I'm outgoing and just hang out and do whatever. But, like, I'm really, like, especially during the season, like, I'm a big loner. Like, I really like to be focused. Like, I'm I'm at home, like, Rachel hardly even talks to me. <laughs> and she's okay with that. Like, that's why I love her because she understands where I'm coming from. Like, during the season, there's nothing more important on this planet than being – at my absolute best every week. And I have a very strict routine. I do the same things. And this is not just during the season. This is from when I start my off season. This is February. So, like, I'm a little crazy in that way. But, like, I feel like that's what you got to – you, you got to be that way to be at the top of your game. So, like, that's what kind of motivates me. But, like, like I was saying, I'm kind of rambling. But, like, especially with family and routine and stuff like that, like, you really had to set boundaries with certain people and realize, like, listen, I'm not – I'm not doing this. Like you're not coming out here and you know staying in my house. Yeah, there's like, a time for everything. There's right? a time yeah. for everything. Like I gotta, I'm, I'm locked in. I gotta, I'm trying to be my best. And when I'm 35, I'll go visit you. You can come visit me. I'm gonna be chilling. I'm let's let's make it 45. How about uh, that? Yeah, All maybe, right, 22. Come on. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. When I'm putting the line. You know, not putting the no, I know, ceiling I know. on it. But yeah, it's just you know. You got to just have that routine and it, understand it. But it's when you bring up that routine, and I've told the story a bunch of times, where that day where you signed the extension, I was here super early. We had something going on in the studio. So I rolled in, and I was like, I don't know, like 6.15, 6.30. Mm -hmm. And none of us at that time knew that you were going to sign that day. 
you know who the person was that drove in right behind me? It was that beautiful orange Porsche of yours. Yes, it was. And, I, and I tell that story all the time where it's like, one, I think that's like the embodiment of like you in a nutshell. But that was in what, March, February? Like, yeah, March Yeah, 11. Yeah, exactly. 11. And it's like, like to your point, like when you have the routine and you know what works, it's like, it doesn't matter if you're playing on Sunday or not. Like you got to stick with what works for you. Yeah, 100%. You know, and I try to tell the young guys that all the time. And even the older guys, like um, having, a, having like vets, I've had multiple vets this offseason come up to me and, not only like ask for advice, but like, you know, they've talked to me and been like, bro, like I, like I truly appreciate you for like helping me out with this certain thing because I've been in the league eight, nine years and I've never even thought about it that way. And like, that's the coolest thing for me. Like I, obviously like I do it for myself to be at my best to, so I can help the team. And that's, you know, that's my way of helping the team. I got to be at my best, but like when you could, you know, pass it down to your teammates and like show guys like, listen, I used to be right here, and I'm telling you, I did this every single day for the last two years, and it's taken my, it's changed my whole life, it's changed my kids, future kids' life. Like, you can change everything um, just by, you know, sacrificing. And like, now, like you talked about, like even in the off season, it's like, okay, I got. There's a lot of guys you get paid, you get your contract, and now it's like, yeah, you can chill now. Like I, there's so I've seen it so many times, and you hear stories, and like, okay, he got paid and he chilled. And he just kind of coasted the rest of his career. And you know what I mean? Like, that motivated me. Like, just – and I kind of make it up in my head, like, how people are looking at me. Like, that's how what, what motivates me. I'm like, okay, I got paid. And I even – I've had an old coach <laughs> call me in the offseason. He's like, so, like, you know, have you kind of – what's – is your routine the same? Are you, like, kind of eating, you know, whatever you want now? I'm like, what? And they kind of piss me off. I'm like, no. Like, I'm going even harder mm. than I was a year before. So, like – that's what kind of motivates me because there's either one way or the other. Like you can go and okay, you did, you got your contract, you got it. You know, agents tell you this, coaches tell you this. You're playing to get to that second deal. Like, no, I don't care about all that. Like that's amazing, of course, I want that, but like, it's so much bigger for me. Like I, I, I care about my legacy more than anything on this planet and what I give back to people, um, and especially just being in Raider Nation. Like I've. I've been, it's been, I'm going to my fourth year now, and it's like, I feel like I've been here my whole life. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm part of the family. And uh, I just want to keep, you know, setting my legacy and setting the standard every day, not only for, you know, my teammates, but like my coaches as well and, and everybody. I just want to be the best version of Max Crosby that I can be every day because I know that's going to help this team get to where we want to go. You know what's wild is that you're saying, oh, yeah, when I'm talking to the young guys, like, I still think of you yeah. as, like, a young dude. You know what I mean? I like, know. I remember you walked into 1220 or the skinny dude from Eastern Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, had a, few, a little less ink on the arms and, and not as much body art. But I was like, it's wild to think that, like, this is year four. Like, you're a legitimate bona fide veteran player now. I know. It's weird. And I, I, I feel like that, too, sometimes. Like, I feel like a – I hear my like I'll, I'll watch an interview of myself talking or something. I'm like, damn, I, feel, I sound like an old man. <laughs> but it's just like I, I feel like I just my story's been a little bit different. Like I really had to grow up fast, and I lived a crazy life at a young age. So it's like I've I feel like I lived three lives already. You know what I mean? And it's crazy to say, but like I've really been through so much at such a young age that it's like I'm just turned 25, but I. I've I've got a ton of wisdom and I've learned so much and I've been on the other side and been on the you know the the hard side of it I've been we're like okay I'm I don't even know if I can play football and like I've been there so you know for me like I never really had a guy like that when I was young or even in college like I never had someone to look up to me and like grab me be like no you're tripping bro I never had that yeah. and it's like now like I look at it and I feel like everybody has a purpose and like you know God works in mysterious ways and I feel like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do and God put me on earth to do. And it's like, I I wake up every day, even though when it's hard and I, I it's like the 6 a.m. in the off season when I'm like, damn, I could really chill and nobody would say, you know what I mean? Yeah, no one would know. Nobody would know. Literally no one would, no one would know. No, There's but nine it, people in this building. <laughs> exactly. No one would know. But like for me, that's, that's what, um, you know, that's why I, I think like, higher power wise like I, I know there's somebody looking at me and I'm looking like internally, I know I'm not going to be happy with myself if I'm not doing everything I can to be my best because I don't want to look back and be like, damn, I remember, you know, after I got paid, I was, you know, I started sleeping in now. Like, I didn't sleep in last year. Why would I sleep in now? Why would I, you know, so it's just 
you know, continuing to sharpen, you know, sharpen the sword and just just be the best version of me. And, and all that work ultimately comes to fruition on a game day, right? Like that's why you, know, you have all these, you know, these 18 days or, you know, hopefully a lot more this year of days where you're like, hey, I get to go out and, and do my thing. And yeah. so going into week one now, like what does Saturday night look like for Max Crosby now? Getting ready before, you know, you meet in the team hotel, but like what is the, the, the kind of night of, of Saturday look like for you? Yeah, honestly, on Saturdays, like, I really just try to, you know, we we have, like, early, like, meetings. Uh, they're usually, like, 9 or 10 or something. We meet for, like, an hour and a half, whatever. Then we're off the rest of the day. Then we have, like, night meetings, 7.30, 8.30, and then you get to go to the hotel. So, for me, um, I really just try to relax. Like, I really don't try to overanalyze, overdo it, like, because I know – Every day during the week and every day in this off season, I've been working to get to this point. So like every day before I got a big game or something like that, I try not to over, you know, overcrowd my brain with, all right, I need to worry about this and this for me. It's just like I, I put in the work. Now it's like all right, I'm ready. Like so, I make sure, and and it's not saying like okay, I just disregard. No, it. It's for like sure. I make sure I put in all that work. So on Saturday, like. I can relax and okay, I'll look at the iPad and just watch a couple of, a couple snaps and get my mind right and make sure I got all, you know, the little things I maybe have questions on, you know, covered up, but yeah, it's really just about relaxing and like if there's a fight on Saturday, like there's Nate Diaz is fighting Saturday. I'm watching Nate Diaz fight. <laughs> I need that. I want to see Nate go out there and put on a show like that. I I love watching stuff like that. But it's always like sports based, like either from competitive wise, like I'm playing 2K against my brother cuz I know competitively I'm trying to win and I truly care about winning so like I'm always just trying to crowd my brain with just like competitive and like top line you know of sports in general like last dance like I've, I've watched the last dance like three four times now because I just love seeing that and I know I, like if some other human could do that and like compete at that level all the time for that long like I know I can do it. It's just, it's not easy. But like, <laughs> that's for me, I need to fill my brain with like stuff like that and just relax. It's it's, it's the best. You, you know, talking about just being a competitor and being competitive by yeah. nature and, and you know, the, the past four weeks of the preseason, right? I obviously didn't see a ton of Max Crosby, but one thing yeah. that I did appreciate immensely <laughs> is, dude, you got the eye black on, <laughs> you're smeared. I know you weren't working a sweat, working up a sweat that much, but by the end of the fourth quarter, I see it. It's, it's running. Like, oh, yeah. it was, uh, I, I did appreciate that. The optics, at least from the outside, I was like, I was like, this guy's not going to go out there and play. But you had, <laughs> dude, you put on a great show. You did. No, you have to. And that's, and that's the other thing, like routine. Like I talk about routine all the time. And you can, <laughs> you can ask some of the rookies, like Darius Butler and all them. They look at me like I'm crazy, because I'm even in the preseason games. Like I have a routine. I'm doing my stretch with Rick an hour before the game. I'm going out doing my pre-workout, um, my pre-game workout on the field by myself. I'm getting in the cold tub, hot tubs in the stadium right after the game. Even in preseason, I wasn't playing, and guys are like, "Why are you doing? It? Like just go home." I'm like. I'm not changing. I don't give a damn. I'm getting ready for the season. I'm mentally just so it's not like when I show up in week one, it's like, okay, now I got to do this. It's like, no, I've been, I've been doing that. Speaking so it's, that's it. just kind of how, how I operate. And even the eye black, yeah. it's the same thing. Like, <laughs> I'm just mentally preparing myself. So when I get out there, it doesn't seem any different. Uh, speaking of our guy, Darius Butler, though, we got yeah. Eastern Michigan, Arizona State coming up in two weeks. Yes, we do. Has the friendly, I'm going to put the heavy emphasis on friendly, <laughs> yeah. has the heavy uh, trash talking begun yet? No, it hasn't. Um, but I'm definitely, I'm glad you reminded me because, uh, yeah, we definitely got to, um, we got to talk about that. Yeah, for sure. I think so. I think that's Absolutely. a conversation that you and Darius probably need to have sometime no, in the no. next seven to ten business days. <laughs> yes. But uh, when you were talking about the, the kind of pregame and your routine and, and everything that goes into it. And mm -hmm. I think there's such a natural excitement going to week one, right? Like this is the first time we're doing it for real. But like mm -hmm. come next weekend and not to look too far down the road, but like next weekend is the home opener, right? It's, yeah. it's a different kind of beast, right? You get to really play in front of the fans. And I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of silver and black fans <laughs> in L.A. this weekend. But I, dude, we've talked about it before. One of my favorite moments of the entire season, and we only get it like four or five times, is the Max Crosby run out, the arrow, <laughs> the gladiator. Dude, it is the – I kid you not. Like, And these guys have heard me talk about it before. It is my favorite thing that we do on a game day, and it's not even close. <laughs> Sorry, I need a – You're good. You're good. I blame Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's funny. Um, I, lo I love hearing that because – I love that moment too. Like just coming out the tunnel, it's everything I dreamed of since I was a kid. Everything I think of, all the hard work. Like you think about that stuff as a kid, you look up and you see Ray Lewis or you know those guys run out the tunnel. You're like damn, like imagine that. 
and now like I could really do that and like it's it's honestly it's crazy and I always you know the fans are the best and I, I love I love the Raider fans the good and the bad that comes with it um and then just in that moment it's just like boom I'm coming out and I'm ready like like I'm about to it's like gladiator type yeah, stuff man. like I'm about to go out there and I'm gonna put my body on the line for all of y'all like everybody in that stadium watching me y'all can count on me I'm gonna go literally put everything I got you know, into this game and help us win. And that's why I think there's such a love affair between you and the fans, a, a very, you know, two-way street. I think that there's a lot of appreciation from them to you, and I know you back to them. But we've taken up enough of your time. Before we get out of here, though, I told you, Will Compton, we got the girl dad hat on right now. Yes. Our friend Will Shout Compton Will. joining us for four, I believe, post-game shows this year. Yeah. I'm going to try to keep him in line, but I, I don't know. Do, I, do we have any tips of how I can keep comp in line, how I can keep playoff Willie uh, playing within our, uh, our our sandbox here? Well, Will's been kind of a wild cannon over the last 6 to 12 months. Yeah. So <laughs> his tweets are getting a little bit more out there. He's he's getting crazier, and, you know, I got mad at him. I was like, bro, you got to take that down. Yeah. I was like, you're tripping, bro. <laughs> but it is what it is. That's Will. You know, Will is, Will is my guy. I love him to death. He's going to do an incredible job, but – there is one thing. He's going to have to really decide. You know, now he's getting on the Raiders show. There's either you're either silver and black to the core or you're, you know, you're, you're not. There's no like, all right, I'm 50% Raiders, 50% Titans. That's not how it works. He's got to commit. And I called him out about this too. I said, listen, you're either, you're either all in or you're all out. So you got to, you got to put him on the spot and really, really make him, you know, share his feelings. I, I will jam him up about that the first yes. day we have him in studio. I love and that. I will say, though, I have noticed that, and you're right, the man is getting wild on the, on the Twitter sticks. <laughs> yes. But whenever he's in full regalia, right, whenever he's wearing an outfit, yeah. it's always Raider-themed gear. Yeah. Very, very seldom, and this isn't a shot at the, the good people in Tennessee, <laughs> yeah. very rarely is it is it Titans gear that he needs. He's always in the silver and black. Well, yeah, just in general, silver and black, you, you can't go wrong. You know, I, I wear a black T-shirt, I think, 98% of the day, so... It just, you know, it's just easier, easier way to live. So, you know, Will's my guy. I love him to death. And he's always just Will Compton. Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate him for that. Very well said. He is just Will Compton. And you are just Max Crosby, but so much more than that. Dude, it's so good to hang out with you. Uh, we don't do this nearly enough. But now that you're locking in, uh, I'll see you in a few weeks. Good luck on Sunday. I'll see you later this week. And uh, go, go do your thing this weekend, all right? Yes, sir. Appreciate you, brother.